Yo, 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 what it do, y'all? It's your boy Charles, aka Faith Gaines, y'all. And we back. If you saw the prior video, like I said, I was gonna do another video right after that. And this is that video, right? And the title of this video is gonna be very simple How Jesus Did and Does Deliverance, right? So let's say a quick prayer. Father God, I come before you as your humble servant, Charles. Oh man, Lord, I pray the viewers uh, really get knowledge from this video and are not fooled of what they're seeing out there in this world, Lord. Uh, the way your son Christ came down and did deliverance for us, Heavenly Father, it was very simple and it was through the will of the Father. A lot of people think that is the, they think that it is them that is doing it. It is not them. It is the will of the Father. All right, our Father in heaven, God the Father, Elohim, right? Yahuwah, right? That who is that is who is giving us the power to deliver people and cast out demons and spirits out of people. Brothers and sisters, please do not get confused. Please do not go out there trying to be a superhero. I, I, God forbid you end up like the, the seven brothers of Sceva. Alright? I pray this now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, let this be an educational video, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Alright, y'all. I don't got much time on the clock because I used uh, a lot of it to do the other video. So I might have to do like another part. But we're going to jump right into it, right? So I got my phone, phone Bible right here, right? And we're going to jump right into it. We're going to go to Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, verse 11, right? Luke 13, verse 11, right? Now, the the inspiration from this video came for me. Uh, I'll speak about it for myself, you know. Um, one day I was just wondering, like, man, I want to do things how Christ did them. I don't want to... I don't want to get caught up in what's going on because there's a lot of phony stuff going on outside of the Bible, right? But one day I just said, man, how did Christ do deliverance on people? And I just literally went through the Bible. I got so, I've been trying to get through a lot of them today, right? I only got a couple minutes. But in the Gospels, and even Paul did a deliverance on a lady that kept saying, these are the men of Christ, these are the men of Christ, right? The the lady that had the divination spirit, right? The, serp, the python spirit, right? There is a certain way that this has to be conducted. Don't, like I said in the prayer, guys, God forgive me, I don't want to curse nobody in the prayer, Lord, I repent if that came off kind of, kind of aggressive. But don't go out there like them dudes, the sons of Sceva, trying to cast out things in Jesus Christ's name and you don't have the spirit of Christ in you. What happened to those fellas? It said that they got beat so bad by the demon. It was seven of them, if I'm not mistaken. They got beat so bad that they ran away bucket naked. Do not be those dudes in your eager attempt to want to play superhero, all right? All right. Deliverance is not a game. It's not a game. It's not a oh. I got I got Christ with me now. I could do I could do deliverance. You can, but there's a time for it. And if you out there doing a lot of that stuff I spoke about in the last video, that that's not Christ moving through you. I'm just being honest. All right. So let's start with Luke 13, verse 11. It said, "Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years." And was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. So she was bowed. She had like a, what we call like a, a, a hunchback. Or, or, or a, a, her spine was bent over, right? For 18 years she had this, right? And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmities. Just like that. He said, woman, thou art loose from that, I, thou infirmity. So he spoke it, right? And now here's the thing that a lot of people go, oh, should you do this or not? If Jesus did it, I'm going to do it, right? If need be, right? Got to let the Holy Spirit guide you on these things, though. And he laid his hands on her, 
and immediately she was made straight and glorified God, right? She was made straight and glorified God. So a lot of people go, oh, you shouldn't lay hands on people. Jesus laid hands on people. It's right here, Luke 11, 13. Jesus laid hands on, on, on this person, right? And just from my, uh, you know, my experience working with Christ, um, the laying of the hands usually comes when you're trying to deliver someone from some type of infirmity, which is like a sickness, an illness, disability, something like that. So that usually comes when you're trying to heal someone from that, you know. And I know I'm speaking fast because I feel like there's something trying to like mess with my neck right now and I rebuke that in Jesus' name, right? So he laid hands on a woman and she glorified God. I should have said that at the start of the video. One very important rule, if not the first rule that we should know when it comes to deliverance and things, of uh, uh, deliverance, I should just say. I believe it's in Ephesians chapter 6, right? I think it's verse 12 or verse 10, right? It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, rulers of darkness, evil wickedness, and high places. Why I should have said this first is because you have to realize it's not the person, and and and, and it this 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 for the, for the month of December this really was in my head. I had to really understand this, right? It's not the person. It's the spirit, either oppressing or possessing that person that you are battling, right? So a lot of people they be like, oh, bon qui qui. She's so angry. She's so angry. You are word cursing the human being, which is only going to make her lean more into the spirit. If she had a spirit of rejection and you tell her, oh, boom, quickly, you so mean. Guess what? She going to take that as rejection and she going to lean into the rejection even more. If she got a spirit of anger and you tell her, you're such a mean person, boom, quickly, you so mean. <laughs> there might be somebody out there named Bone Quickly. I'm, I'm sorry, Bone Quickly. I gotta use your name, girl. Bone Quickly, you so mean, right? And all you are doing is you are lighting a fuse in that spirit of anger. You need to talk to the spirit, right? Talk to the spirit, right? And another thing, that person may not be ready for deliverance. You cannot force no one to deliver us. I've made this mistake. I say it right in front of y'all. Underneath the Father right now, I've made this mistake. And I've, and I've prayed over people. And they let me know that they ain't like that. So I made this mistake. One thing about deliverance, people must be ready for it. If you over here trying to, yo, you got a spirit of anger. Let me take that demon off you, man. You don't know what kind of door you about to open. All right. Sorry, my camera's on auto focus. It is bugging out right now. Sorry, I just just hear my voice, y'all. You don't know what door you about to open. All right. You over here thinking you helping, and you hurting, right? Sorry about that, y'all. I don't know. My camera's bugging just now, y'all. That's crazy, right? Clearly, I must be saying something, right? Right? You don't know what door you just opened, right? And one important thing I learned about deliverance, right? If this person is not a believer of Christ, right? If they really, if you speak to them about deliverance and what they really battling, it is... Muy importante, very important, that right after the deliverance, they be baptized. Why? Because what did the Bible say? What did Christ tell us? I believe it's in Matthew. He said, when an unclean spirit go out of a man, it goes into dry land, right, seeking rest. And if it findeth none, it comes back to the house to see if it's swept. The house is you. The house is, is, is your, your physical body. It comes back to see if the house has been swept. And then it comes back bringing seven spirits more wicked than itself, right? And the state of that man be worse than the first. 
If you try to do deliverance on someone who does not want to be saved by Christ, you are walking them into a pit. Do you understand that? Why? They don't have the covenant of God. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the blood of Christ. They don't know how to put on full armor. You are walking that person into a death trap. A spiritual death trap. And I repent. I don't want to speak death over nobody, Lord. But you are leading them astray. Right? There is a time and a place for deliverance. Right? If you go through the Gospels, right? This is one of the very rare times in Luke, right? Where we see that Jesus actually went over to the person, right? If let's find another example real quick, I got a little bit more time, right? But let me let me read let me read a little bit more, right? It says, And the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation, which is anger, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, right? Healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, right? There are six days in which men ought to work. And them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and led him away to water? Right? Christ's healing is the water. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound? Whoa! Whoa! Let's stop right there. Whom Satan had bound, right? When someone is under spiritual oppression or possession, they are being bound by Satan. All right? They are being bound by saying, you must... I'll get into that. I'll get into that. That might be on the next video, right? It says, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound... Wait a minute. A daughter of Abraham? She's a believer in God. But Wayne, I got I, I I I can't be I can't be spiritually oppressed. I'm baptized. She was a but she was a believer in, in God and she was bound by Satan. Guys, if you don't open doors, then things will come in. It's very simple. Oh, I like this movie, I like to watch horror flicks, or I like to watch this kind of music or listen to this kind of videos. Well, guess what's coming? Spirits is coming. Close those doors, y'all. Close those doors and you won't and it won't lead to spiritual oppression. Alright? And Christ said, Lo, these 18 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Right? So Christ was telling them, okay, you loose your oxen and your asses on the Saturday to get water. Right? Is this woman who's a daughter of Abraham not like those animals? That don't she deserve water? Didn't Christ say, I'm the who he that drinks from me shall never thirst? Right? He led her to the water with the healing. Right? Let me see if I can find another one real quick, y'all. I'm trying to find another example. Real quick. I only got like two minutes left. Let's see. Let's see if I can find a quick one. Let's see if I can find a quick one. All right. All right, this one, let's see. So this is Matthew 12, verse 22, right? This is why I say it's very rare that Christ actually went up to the people and just delivered them, right? Because you'll, you'll see if you read the gospel, someone always brought someone to Christ, right? It says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spoke, both Spake and saw, right? And the people were amazed and said, Is this not the son of David? When the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan cast Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Right? Basically, every time Jesus casted a devil out of somebody, clearly the Pharisees were there to say something about it. Right? Christ casted people by the Spirit of God the Father and that's who we need to rely on. Alright? Very simple. Alright? 
With that being said, it's your boy Charles. I love y'all. Peace.